and girls, it's Wednesday. We're halfway through our special um, week talking about Joseph and school assemblies at home. We're going to sing two songs and we've got lots of videos, or sorry, photographs of children all over the country about coats and colours as we think about Joseph as bright coloured coat and lots of you have got nice colours with your warm winter coats. Let's sing two songs, then we'll show you one of the videos. Are the videos ready? Stephen Y. to remember because God won't forget you. Are you ready to see, to see some of you with your winter woolies, your coats and bright colours? Here we go. <laughs> he is my life. He is my life. 
thank you now for singing. Now we're going to continue our story. Anyone remember who we're talking about? We're talking about Joseph. And it's Wednesday, the middle of the Bible club. Here we're going to talk about Joseph and it's from the pit to the palace. Remember Joseph in the pit? If you haven't been watching Monday or Tuesday, we're just going to reflect. We're talking about this little boy called Joseph. He's a youth. He's 17 years old. He's got 10 older brothers, a little brother. His father's called Jacob. His brothers are very, very jealous of Joseph. Were jealous of him. They envied him. They hated him. In fact, just because he got a lovely coat, that's why I made the videos of the or the photographs to make the video of you wearing your nice coloured coats. I colours with your coat on. And Joseph loves sheep. So we're going to have another competition today for Friday. We'll tell you about that at the end. Here's Joseph. His brothers are plotting. They're planning against him. So Joseph, he's dreaming. He has a dream about the sun, the moon, the stars. They're all bound down to him. About the sheets of corn as if they're bound down to him. And Joseph tells his brothers his dream. And they say, Joseph, we will never, ever bow down to you. Twice they said they would never bow down to Joseph. So Joseph runs to find his brothers in the field give them some food find out how they're doing to report back to their dad and as a result when he came running their father wasn't there to protect him they took off his coat and they threw him into a pit they wanted to kill him they wanted to finish him but Reuben the other brother said no don't kill him Ishmaelites came and they sold him as a slave and they left him in the pit but the one lesson throughout this story about the life of Joseph was that the Lord was with Joseph and just like the Lord is with Joseph the Lord is with me the Lord can be with you today as well if you're one of his children you've asked him to forgive you to take away your sin to save you you become a Christian then you can say like Joseph the matter what pitfalls you come in life no matter who turns against you goes against you if life doesn't go your way you can know that the Lord is with you but remember the little buts in the Bible but God was with Joseph a lovely 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 thought Joseph then is put onto a camel he's tied up he's sold uh, for 20 pieces of silver and he's taken off to Egypt by Israelite people to be sold as a slave. So right away, in many ways, Joseph is a type, reminds us of the Lord Jesus. You can read about Joseph in Genesis chapter 37. Here Joseph is, is uh, sold on the slave market where people can buy clothes and animals and food, but also people to become laborers, to become slaves, to work. And he was bought by Potiphar, the most important man in the country who, uh, who worked for, who, who was the Pharaoh, the king's right hand man. Many slaves would have worked there many servants and Joseph was young fit healthy and Pharaoh uh, Potiphar liked him so he bought him and as a result of Joseph's life Potiphar really liked him he promoted Joseph to being in charge over, over the entire household he trusted Joseph with his life and the Bible says God blessed the house of Potiphar because of Joseph and it's amazing how one individual can make a difference God could bless your home because of you he could bless your school because of you as someone who the Lord is with whom someone that you if you really love the Lord and do everything in life are pleasing to God that is a secret of life and everything you do, love the Lord with all your heart, your body, mind and soul. And in everything you do, seek to please God with your life. Whether you're at home, whether you work for someone, you're a servant to someone, or whether you are, have got everything this world has got, or you've got nothing, it doesn't make a difference in God's eyes. But how you live before God makes all the difference. But then something went wrong. Before that, how is Joseph a type of Christ? Or how does he remind us of the Lord Jesus? You've got Jesus, you've got Joseph. How does Joseph remind us of Jesus? Well, Jesus was despised. Read about Jesus in the New Testament. He was despised by the religious leaders. He was sold. He was by, remember, um, on, on, in 
When he was upstairs and he had 12 disciples and Judas sold them for 30 pieces of silver, he had a great love for God so loved the world that he gave. The Lord Jesus gave his life, shown his love. He preserved life. He was found alive. Remember he was buried. Three days later he rose again from the dead. The glorious resurrection. And he had compassion and love and such a heart for people. And as we go through Joseph's life, we can see how he was despised by his brothers. He was sold. And then we're going to find out about his great love, how he was found alive in the pit, and about his compassion for his brothers and family. But something went wrong, because while Joseph was going around the palace working really hard, Potiphar's wife was very wealthy. She had everything she wanted, beautiful clothes, she had jewellery, she had the best of food, anything she wanted she could have got. And even to controlling people. But one thing she desired. And that was Joseph. To control Joseph. And one day she said. Joseph come and lie with me. Joseph said I could never do that against your husband. Or against God. And boys and girls. Even though nobody else was there. Day after day she would tempt Joseph. And he would keep running. But this day she grabbed Joseph. And Joseph ran away from her. And she pulled off his coat. And as a result, when she realized what she couldn't get, she began to scream for help as if Joseph had tried to do something for her. Even though Joseph was young, he was innocent, he loved God, he was proven. He was put into prison as a result. So being a Christian, boys and girls, doesn't mean life's going to be rosy, doesn't mean everything's going to go your way. Many innocent people are blamed uh, wrongly and accused falsely and the Bible's full of stories like this for our inspiration to help us as we go through life. But then Joseph, even though he's in the, in the prison, do you know what happened? The Bible says, and the Lord was with Joseph in the prison. God was with Joseph and God blessed him and Joseph was promote, promoted to being in charge of all the prisoners. Such was his life, his countenance, the way he looked, the way he walked, the way he talked. Uh, they liked him, the guards liked him and promoted him to be in charge of the prisoners. And he would talk with them and talk and help them and pray for them. And one day two prisoners looked very sad. And Joseph said, what's wrong? Why are you so sad looking? And Joseph, as they began to tell their stories, Joseph said, I can help you with that. Tell me. And they began to tell them about their dreams. And one of them said, he was a butler. He would carry wine for the king. But he said, in my dream I couldn't understand it because there was bunches of grapes and they were all squeezed and squashed and the juice came out and went into the, into the baker and I was able to carry it to the king. And Joseph said, that's, that's, I know what that means. That means you're going to get out of prison and you're going to be freed from prison and you're going to get your job back to carry wine to the king. And the the other man who was a baker, the other prisoner, he was really sad. He said, in my dream, I was baking bread and carrying the bread to the king. But the birds came and they would eat the bread as I was carrying it and destroy the bread and take it all away. Joseph said, your dream means you're going to get out of prison, but you're not going to get your job back. You're going to be put to death. You're going to die for what you've done. And boys and girls, Joseph said, if you get out of prison... Remember me. Tell the king I'm innocent. Tell him to get me out of here. Both the men got out of prison. One got their job back as, jo as Joseph said. One of them died. But none of them told the king about Joseph in the prison. And how he was able to interpret dreams. You know how long Joseph was in the prison for? For many, many years. Did God forget about Joseph? No. He never forgot about Joseph. Then we come to the king. The Potiphar, the Pharaoh, and the king. And what happened? He had a dream. And in the dream, he couldn't understand. He was troubled and he got all his wise men to come and interpret his dream. But nobody could do it. The magicians, the wise men, the philosophers, nobody can help the king tell his dream. Until the baker, he spoke up, and, or the, the butler spoke up and said, when I was in prison... There was a man who looked after us. He was very kind. He was very nice. His name was Joseph. And he was able to tell me my dream. And realizing my dream, he knew what my dream meant. He can interpret dreams. So Joseph was called for. The Bible says he cleaned himself up. He took a bath. 
and he put on nice clean clothes because he was coming before Pharaoh, before Potiphar, before the king. Pharaoh and Potiphar. And Joseph said he was very mannerly. And he said, tell me your dream. And he began to talk about his dream. He said, in my dream there were seven skinny cows and seven fat cows. And I can't understand, but they were in the river. And the seven skinny cows came out of the river and gobbled up the seven fat cows. Yes. And he said, in the other dream, there were seven skinny pieces of corn. And they gobbled up the seven fat pieces of corn. What does that dream mean? You see, as Joseph stood before Pharaoh the king, even then the Lord was with Joseph. And as Pharaoh stood before Joseph, he would say, translate the dream, tell me the dream, or you will go back to prison for the rest of your life, or you might even be put to death. Can you imagine the pressure? And Joseph was not allowed to make anything up. It must be the truth. This was his opportunity for freedom. Was God going to use Joseph as he stood before the king? Was God going to tell Joseph what the dream meant? What did it mean the seven skinny cows eating seven fat cows? Or the seven skinny corn eating the seven fat cows? Corn. As Joseph stood there, he realized this is life or death. Then he would pray, God, would you help me? Help me to translate, to interpret this dream. The question is, was God going to do that? Or was God going to allow Joseph to go back to prison for many years? God had a big plan for Joseph. And as Joseph stood there, suddenly began to speak. Do you want to know what he said? Do you want to know what the dream meant? When he talked about the skinny cows eating a fat cow, skinny corn eating a fat corn. I know what the dream meant. But the question is, do you? We're going to find out tomorrow. <laughs> this is a good story because it's really good tomorrow. Right, let's do a quiz. It's very important we know how we're following the story. So we do a quiz. We've got the kitchen utensils. Some of you might have a TV in your kitchen. You've got an oven, a rolling pin, sink, uh, mixer, not a sweat mixer, mixer, kettle for a cup of tea. Well, you might not have a bed, but you might go for a wee sleep at the kitchen table doing your schoolwork. Haha, <laughs> I know. When I was a wee boy, the teacher used to say, put your head in your shoulders, head in your shoulders, put your head in your arms, fold your arms, go for a wee sleep. <laughs> you should go for a wee sleep. That was to calm you down. And then oven gloves. Make sure you wear oven gloves. You put your hands in the oven, you're going to burn them. Yes, Joanna's done that before once or twice. <laughs> Not funny. Right, girls, who can tell me the story this week is about a man called who? Joseph, well done. What do you want? The bed? Ha, go for me, sleep. Yes, 16. Remember, it's 1-1, one, one, so whoever wins today will take the lead. Good boys, Joseph had brothers, and there's a, there was a big problem, and Joseph got a new coat. They were what? They were J. They were jealous of him. That's right. What do you want? The t TV. <laughs> TV. 100. How did you know that? Girls, whenever uh, Joseph was taken away on an animal, was it a monkey, a donkey, a fox, a uh, rabbit, or a camel? Camel. Yes, well done. What do you want, girls? Oven. Good. 150. That's a big one. Well done. Girls are winning. <laughs> but hold. Boys are on your tail. Boys, whenever we think about Joseph, who was always with Joseph? The Lord. That is a secret. What do you want? Sink. When I was a wee boy, we used to have a sink like this. And we used to sit here. There's only one of these. Sit here and put your feet in there. Yes. And my mum would wash our feet. <laughs> yes. Now another day you'd sit on your, your knees and put your head in there. And you'd wash your hair. That's what I had here. Yes, reminds me of those days. Sing for the boys. What's it going to be? 50. Woo! Whoa, it's quite close, but the girls are still winning. Girls, whenever we talk about Joseph, he was taken and he was put into a place for many years, a place you never want to go. What was it? Prison, that's right. What do you want? Knives. Okay. 80 girls. It looks like you're going to win today. Boys, why was... Uh, 
who, who accused Joseph of doing wrong? Potiphar's son, daughter, mother, or wife, that's right. What do you want? Cattle. 70. Right, I'm going to add these up. That's 17220 against. Whoa, what's this? 8140 and 150 is 290. 290 for the girls, 220. This is a final one. Girls, in the story we talked about Joseph and he is promoted. God blessed the house of Potiphar because of Joseph. What was Joseph's secret? I'm going to ask this again. Who was with Joseph everywhere he went? The Lord, that's right, well done. Mixer. Okay, for the girls, we've got a mixer. 30, I mean, you've got 320. Boys, you need 100 to draw, or more than 100 to win. Gloves or a rolling pin? I think you'll take possibly the gloves, because they keep you warm, you can throw snowballs. Boys, who can tell me the story of Joseph? Whenever he went, he was sold as a slave. He was put into prison, but he was able to translate the dreams of who? To... Prisoners, that's right. Gloves, yep. 30. Remember, boys, on Monday I give the girls a, a free one twice. I'm going to give that to the boys today. Boys have got 250. Girls have got 320. I'm going to give it away. Yes, to the boys. 50. No, it's not enough. 300. Joanna's laughing, celebrating in the background because the girls won. Well done, girls. Two to the girls. One to the boys, but tomorrow I think the boys will win, and then we'll have a final on Friday. Right, let's sing our final song, and then we've got a special announcement for a new competition. Do you all know this song? You should know it. Competition. Yes, all the winners today, there's been 10 winners will be chosen for today and we're going to announce them on Friday. And as well as that, there's going to be another 10 winners and this is a competition today. We talked about sheep in the story, we talked about camels in the story, but so if this competition is animals, 
There are lots of little lambs being born, there are lots of little calves, but if you've got a cat or a dog or a horse or a sheep or a donkey or a goat, any animal, I want a photograph with you with your animal. Yes, uh, with your animal. Send it in. Four o'clock tomorrow is the deadline. And remember that Bible Club's going on all week, been up, uploaded at nine o'clock each morning uh, for the Bible Club. The key verse and the Lord is with Joseph. Hopefully you're seeing that in Joseph's life as we go on. Uh, the winner, I'll send the winners a picture of these books and you get to choose any book you want it and it's posted to you free of charge. Wonderful. Here, where do you send your competition to, your pictures? Either to uh, email, biblefundmate at gmail.com, to the Messenger, Hopeful Youth Ministries, or to the WhatsApp 07 Parents only, could you please send these in for the children? So don't forget, this is a special week this week uh, for assemblies. We're having a special online Bible club. But that's it for today. We're back tomorrow to find out what happened to Joseph. Was he able to interpret the dream? See you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day.